What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, I take you along in the boat with me as I find offshore bass on Lake Uchi in Oklahoma. I'll show you how I use down imaging, side imaging, and 2D sonar along with my mapping to find productive offshore ledges, and also the baits and presentations I use to trick these finicky summer bass into biting. Hope you enjoy. Morning y'all, welcome back to another Fish the Moment long form video. Today we're on Lake Uchi in Oklahoma. The plan today is to find some fish on offshore ledges. Lake Uchi is one of the few lakes in my area that has really defined ledges, so I want to show you how I graph them with side imaging, down imaging, 2D sonar, what they look like on the mapping, and also hopefully catch some fish with the live scope. Before we get into that though, I want to give a huge shout out to a few of the sponsors of the Fish the Moment long form videos. First up, we have Bridgeford Foods. Bridgeford is a longtime sponsor of Fish the Moment, and they make great snacks you can take on the boat with you. My favorite is the sweet teriyaki beef jerky. It is a great snack, tastes great, gives you some good protein out here on the water, which is always helpful to keep your energy up. And, you know, Bridgeford is just a great brand that supports bass fishing. There are very few non endemic companies that support bass fishing and bass fishing content. So definitely support Bridgeford, great company that supports the sport we all love. Also want to give a huge shout out to another sponsor of the Fish Moment Long Form content, which is Integrated Boat Works. Darren over in Tulsa, Oklahoma runs a great boat shop. If you need anything installed on your boat, like all the electronics I'm going to be showing you in this video, definitely check out Darren's website, Integrated Boat Works. Give him a call to get some stuff installed. And more importantly, if you could help pick up some products off his website. If you plan on getting anything for your boat, electronics wise, instead of going to a big box retailer, support one of these local businesses that supports the content you love here on Fish the Moment and is just a great you know, asset to the community. Darren rigs a ton of boats for professional anglers and he is one of the top electronics installation guys in the entire country. So if you guys need any help with your electronics, definitely give Darren a call over Integrated Boat Works, link down in the description. Awesome, so now we got all that out of the way, let me put my beef jerky away so it doesn't blow out of the boat. And then let me switch over to a mapping view. We are here early in the morning. There's some shallow grass that looks great over here that I am not gonna be fishing because, you know, we're, we're offshore fishing. That's how we do it here on Fish the Moment. Let's get all this organized. There we go, got my graphing view set up. Everything is rolling. Okay, let's make sure we got our recording rolling. Oh yeah, we're good, okay. So, got my graph pulled up got all my mapping. Let's roll. We're going to run down the lake here just a little bit uh, and then check a few spots. I have five or six spots I marked just before I got out in the lake that are hopefully going to maybe hold some fish and we're just going to graph a bunch of stuff. And I don't know if we're going to actually find that many fish today. If they're going to be offshore, we're not really sure, but we're about to find out. Actually, don't need the sunglasses. I'm just going to put these in my hand. So let's get to the first spot.
Okay, so before we start graphing some of the ledges that are over here, I do want to check out one of these really nice channel swing points. There is basically a creek channel that runs right here on the screen, and there's a point right here that drops off from shallower to deeper water. Another one here that drops from shallower to deeper water. And sometimes these fish will get on this spot, and it's just kind of a little bit out of the way, so I like to check it as I run up the lake, because a lot of guys will check these ledges and stuff, but not that many guys will come check this spot specifically. Uh, I need to get some of my settings changed up here. On this, let me uh, get my fish the moment settings on. That look that much better, to be honest. There's a lot of stuff in the water right now. It looks like we have a thermocline setting up. If we kind of crank the sensitivity up on this, uh, I can try bump the gain up. You can see pretty clear there's a thermocline that's set in right at that 15 foot mark, right in here. Right there is a thermocline. It's set up 15 to 17 feet. So that's about as deep as we're going on the fish. All I did was bump my gain up. I'm gonna go back to my fish in the moment settings here and play it. But basically what that means is that if we're gonna to wanna to try to find some fish, we're gonna to wanna to hopefully find them in that 15 foot zone. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying about this lake is there's a lot of junk in the water. Uh, whether there's a lot of silt, but also there's a lot of trash fish, carp and gar and all kinds of stuff. So like you see fish on the screen there and there's a bunch of fish, but that doesn't always mean that they're bass. <laughs> uh, that's one thing I have learned about this lake. They're not always going to be bass. So what I do is I graph over a spot and when you see stuff like that, I'm gonna make sure this is, that my settings are set on this, my normal settings. Yeah, they're normal settings. So when you see this on the screen where there's just, it's just piled up with stuff. I'm not fishing that. I'm not touching that. That is not in my wheelhouse. There's too much crap on the screen there. And I just don't like seeing that much activity on the screen, to be honest, because what you're getting into is you're not gonna be able to differentiate the species of fish, one type of fish from another type of fish. And there's so much bait and so much just debris around that it's very hard to differentiate one thing from another. So. When you get in these situations where there's stuff everywhere, and this is kind of why I wanted to come to this lake, because it, it happens like this. There's just stuff all over the place out here. And I want to find a spot that is in that 15 to 18 foot range, because that's where the thermocline is. And I want to find a group of fish that looks a lot cleaner, that doesn't have that much crap going on on the screen, because it just, it's really hard to differentiate these fish. And so we're going to be doing a lot of comparison with my 2D sonar and down imaging. So if you see that on the screen where it's just covered up on the, the down imaging uh, and the 2D sonar, I'm not gonna touch that. I'm not even gonna bother fishing because it's just, it's too hard to differentiate the bass from other species. And I need to know that there are bass down there. That is pretty important because otherwise I'm just wasting time. And we're probably gonna run into this problem a lot. Looks like there's some floating debris as well. So some of this is not just fish, it's also floating debris. There's all kinds of stuff going on here on this lake. Um, I'm gonna need to reset my camera real quick. Something's going on with my camera. So give me a second. We're gonna actually move to another spot after this, but let me stop this recording and start another one real quick. Fix this camera. Just give me half a second. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sometimes the camera gear can cause all kinds of issues. So we're just gonna keep rolling. Hopefully that solved it. We'll find out. Um, let's keep rolling though. So we're gonna run to the next little stretch. That was a very uneventful first stop because there's just stuff everywhere and hopefully we don't run into stuff like that where there's just crap all over the screen everywhere because if there is we're gonna have to call an audible and change our strategy up a little bit but i'll explain that if we need to do that so let's keep rolling
killing me right now to not go fish some of the shallow water willow. There's all kinds of good water up here in the, well, the lake's kind of low actually, but it's a good time of day to fish the water willow. I guess I'll put it that way. There's a pile of water willow down all these banks that looks really good just this morning, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I know how the water willow game goes where you pull up there and you can run it for an hour and only get one or two good bites. And I want to use that time before the sun gets up and it gets too hot to actually graft these spots and find some fish for you guys. If I was out here on a normal day, I probably would be fishing the water willow, but I need to graft and do all this stuff before the sun gets up and I can't record anymore. So uh, we're kind of a little bit early probably for the ledge bite to be on, but at least we can identify spots with fish with the fish finder. So anyways, got a nice ledge that's running right here and a, kind of a point that then leads to a big flat and there's an edge right there. That's your ledge right in that zone. That's going to be your ledge. So we're going to graph this with this. So we got some nice rock here, kind of getting up on top of it a little bit fast. Uh, again, kind of key zone because of the thermocline is going to be 17 feet and less. So we're going to try to graph in that like 17, 15 to 17 foot range. And what we're looking for are places where we think we can see bass specifically. So we're going to be doing a lot of switching between these two. So that looks a little bit promising at least. So we actually have a few bigger dots in this and also right there. So we might mark that really fast as potential fish. There's some bigger dots that are mixed in and there's some nicer arches over here on 2D as well. And there's a little bit less crap going on. There's a lot of stuff here going on. You can see there's actually some fish that are sitting up on the bottom right there on the 2D and on down imaging. Switch back over to this other view so we can see where we're going. Um, so like on this ledge, on this drop, there are definitely some fish. I can see them kind of scattered out on kind of on the 2D a little bit, but again, there's so much debris in the water and there's so much bait. Like that's all bait right there. Uh, it, it is just, it's overwhelming how much stuff is on the screen. So I personally don't like to mess with that that much if I can help it. And really my strategy is going to be right now to identify a spot hopefully that we know for sure is bass. And if we can't be 100% sure, because it's not, you know, nothing is 100%, then what we're going to do is we're going to try to find some hard structure like that rocky spot out there to the left of the boat uh, on side imaging or like a brush pile or something like that that is a little bit more conducive to holding fish. And really, we're going to almost ignore the what we're seeing on the graph. Now, that's not always the best uh, solution, but like there's a really nice rocky spot, for example, like right here on the side scan that I like a lot. And, like this is the type of stuff I'd be looking for. We have a nice ledge where we see there's a bunch of activity in fish. But right there, there's a nice random hard spot. It's clean bottom, clean bottom, hard spot. That's a spot that I would come back and potentially just fire on because it's a hard bottom area that those fish can relate to around all of this chaos. It's also differentiated and separated out just enough, and you can see there's just stuff everywhere. I think some of these are white bass, some of this is, I have no idea what all this is. But we're gonna graph over this little rocky spot. This spot's a little bit further up on top of the drop, a little bit away from all of the noise of all of these fish and cover and everything. And that hard spot there, it's just something different that these fish can relate to. I kind of went over it. We're gonna go switch over to the combo view. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of rock and there's a few smaller arches right on this deal right here. And there's a lot of other stuff though. So it's kind of hard to tell what we're looking at. It doesn't look fantastic, so we're not gonna stop. But uh, yeah, we're just graphing down this ledge. We're kind of coming around the edge of this drop getting into that 14, 15 foot zone, hoping I can find some brush or maybe a, uh, again, a bigger rock pile. But you can see there's just, there's stuff everywhere. And it's, again, it's very overwhelming. And it's overwhelming for me too, because there's just stuff all over the screen. So when it happens like this, I kind of just almost ignore all of that 
and I start looking for things that I from 100% sure are bass, which means I'm gonna have to spend more time graphing than I might on a lake where there's not as much stuff, where basically when you find something, it's fish. Here today, that's not gonna be the case. It's gonna be, we're gonna graph a ton of stuff that looks kind of decent, and then all of a sudden, you, you might catch one. So here's some nice brush. We actually have some brush on the side scan here, finally. Something to kind of get these fish potentially related to. So we're gonna mark this. We have these little rocky spots, we have this little brush. So what we might end up doing is we may get to a point where we're just gonna have to run this sort of stuff. Um, I marked those with two different icons for literally no reason. But the idea is we're going to graph through these areas and these fish that are out here, when you see schools of fish like this in the Tennessee River, for example, a lot of times you'll see that you'll have like carp and bass mixed, or you're gonna have a bunch of gar mixed with bass. You have all these different like combinations of stuff. And it gets overwhelming because you just, you see so many things and you're like, what is what? And in those scenarios, again, the key is to find hard cover because there's plenty of bait out here. But what's happening, here's some more kind of like stumps or something over here, I'll mark that as a stump. Um, what's happening out here is that these fish are just roaming and chasing this morning on all this bait. They're kind of out here in the middle probably. They're not really on anything super particular, but as the sun starts to get up, these fish will tighten down around hard cover because they need an ambush point. All of these places I'm graphing are basically, are in marking here, like these brush piles, rock piles, stuff like that. They're all potential ambush points for these bass, places where the bass can actually stop and set up and ambush the shad. And bass by nature are ambush predators. They like to get into a hunting or like a, a ambush mode, get around a stump, get around a rock, get around a brush pile by nature. So when in doubt, you can go and find fish around isolated brush, isolated rock most days, even if the screen is completely flooded out with everything. And if you watch my last uncut or live long form video, I just called it four different things, whatever these type of videos are on Beaver, you'll notice that my screen was very clean most of the time. And when I did see fish, boom, I was catching them. This is going to be a very different day because it's a very different lake. And that's why I like fishing different lakes because the skills that you have on one lake do transfer to an extent to other lakes, but it's not guaranteed that you're going to have the exact same look on the screen, the exact same settings are not gonna work perfectly. Um, my settings are pretty universal overall the way I set them and I kind of like to keep them relatively static across situations because I know at least what I'm looking at. Uh, but like today, there's a lot of mess on the screen, especially on the 2D or on the down imaging. The down imaging view is a mess right now. So like look at that 2D sonar. It's just, there's just crap everywhere and it's just really overwhelming. And you just kind of have to not worry about that so much. I'm gonna just keep graphing because there's a couple things that's gonna happen. One, we're gonna graph here for like an hour and we're not gonna find a single school of fish that's like grouped up really well that we are sure is bass or we are. And if we don't find anything like an hour, maybe even an hour and a half of graphing that looks like a school of bass, that means we're gonna have to start calling the audible and going towards targeting those isolated pieces of cover I've marked already. And that means pulling up on them, making one or two casts with a jig or a crankbait or something like that, hitting those pieces of cover with a couple casts, moving to the next one. Hit a piece of cover with a couple casts, move to the next one. That is a very valid strategy on a lake like this, even though there probably is a school of fish somewhere that may be biting, but again, if it's hidden in all of that mess that's on the screen, it's gonna be very hard to differentiate and I can waste a bunch of time fishing on ledges and fishing on spots that just are not productive. So we're gonna avoid unproductive water as best we can and try to fish the productive water. That grass up there though does look really freaking good this morning. If I start seeing like big gizzards kicking in the grass, I might pick up a frog or a swim jig and go throw over there for a minute, but I haven't seen anything quite yet. When I'm graphing like this, it's kind of nice because you do have the luxury of being able to kind of observe not only your grass, but also the, or graphs, but also the shallower surroundings like the grass that's up here. So it's nice to kind of get a little bit of both going on whenever you can, basically just Keep your eyes open, be observant. There's a little brushy 
heel, a little lay down log. I don't know if that looks, looks kind of small. But it's kind of in the right depth. I might mark that just so I have stuff because it's always good to have more than less over here on this right side. We have a little lay down. Good to have more of that than less when you're trying to run a deal like this where like if I have to, if I have to get to a point where I'm running isolated pieces of cover, I'm gonna want a lot of cover. I'm gonna want 15, 20 spots because I'm only gonna pull up and make five casts on the spot, move on, five casts, move on. So it's a lot better to have 10, 15 brush piles than have one or two. Man, as soon as we hit that 17 foot mark, it gets crazy with fish and bait. And then it caps off right there at that thermocline at 13 feet. You see all these shad, you see all this stuff. Just a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna run up a little bit further. There's a spot up here I wanna check out. I'm gonna kind of, uh, kind of getting away from anything that looks super interesting. Now, now, this spot right here is kind of infamous. Uh, I cracked them here like five years ago, four years ago, did a ledge video, that's like 400,000 views. And I did a ledge fishing video and it was on this spot right here. There's a ledge that runs right here, kind of a bar that runs out, drops off on both sides and they were sitting right up on that deal right there when I found them a few years ago. Don't know if I'm gonna find anything here now, uh, probably won't. That's just normally how it goes for me. I never catch fish off the same spots, like literally ever. Um, it's very weird. But if they're here, I mean, I freaking cracked them here. I had like 25 pounds so uh, from a best five. So we are on a spot that I know has potential. And I know bass have used at some point in their life. So we're going to kind of graph this pretty thoroughly. There's a lot of nuances to this spot. So we're going to have to kind of graph around but I do want to get up here at least in that 17 foot zone if I can because that was kind of what we identified as the key depth. There's so much bait, so many fish just junk all over the screen right now. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm seeing them on side imaging, down imaging, or sorry, 2D sonar and side imaging. I'm seeing just stuff everywhere. So it's not like I'm seeing anything that really pops off the screen. It's just there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I will let you know if I see something that pops off the screen it's like, ooh, there's some, there's some bass or whatever. Uh, the side imaging might actually be an easier way to identify the better quality fish today than the 2D sonar down imaging, but that's yet to be seen. Just a working hypothesis. We're going to keep graphing down this deal. We're getting a little bit shallower. I'm gonna kind of spin us around and kind of re-hit this from a little bit deeper. When you're on a spot that you know you've caught fish on before, it's always good to at least give it a couple of passes, but I wouldn't by any means just say, oh, let's pull up here and fish here because I caught fish here five years ago. That is not a good strategy. <laughs> um, that is just fishing history. That's not fishing the moment. So we're not going to do that, but I do want to see if someone's ever planted brush out here or something. Like if there's any brush that got planted, I'm also going to switch to this just to see. I mean, those are white bass or something that aren't bass on the 2D right now. There's a bunch of stuff out here that's not, that looks like not bass. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but we're gonna keep rolling. Some of these probably are bass, to be fair, but there's so much other stuff mixed in that it's not even worth taking the time to try to fish for them. There's also so much bait and stuff around that it's really hard to differentiate the bass from, ooh, that's kind of interesting. What's that? Um, I saw something on, on the side imaging there, but was nothing. 
Um, another option out here, obviously, is I could go around with like a big flutter spoon and like a hair jig and stuff like that, and I could try to target isolated, bigger dots that I'm seeing on the screen and live scope around. And that's potentially an option. Like if I, if I run out of anything and I don't find any sort of pattern, I might do that where I just literally get up here, I get in this general zone and just kind of live scope around and try to target individual fish. That's something a lot of guys are doing recently. And it could work. I'm not gonna start doing that. There's a nice little piece of something on side scan, which looks nice. Um, I'm gonna mark that. It's right in the correct depth range. Looks like a little bit of brush, a little bit of rock kind of combo. That looks really good. So like, again, that's a hard piece of cover that I can actually do something with. There's a little bit of hard cover there. Maybe there's some bass setting up around it. It's really hard to tell because there's just so much stuff on the screen. So I'm not gonna get you know, my hopes up too much. There's a bunch of stuff on side scan right there. Holy cow. There's a bunch of fish right there. I don't know what they are. There's a bunch of fish on the side scan right there. There's a bunch of fish on the down scan too. These look like white bass. Yeah, they're most likely white bass or something that's not bass, but we're gonna re-roll this real quick and then there's a little point behind us we need to check out and we're gonna roll. We're gonna run the next, uh, next stretch and we're just gonna keep doing this until we get somewhere that looks really promising. Like I, I don't, I'm not gonna stop on anything until I like feel, man, there's definitely fish here. And when I'm on beaver, when you guys see me do videos of beaver, there's fish everywhere. There's so many bass and so many just like stuff. So I stop and fish way more on beaver than other places. Cause honestly, there's a lot of fish. There's a lot of numbers of fish too. Uh, and they're all bass. There's a lot of bass. There are some places with just a lot of striper. That's true too, but usually I can differentiate those pretty well on my fish finder, so I'm not super worried about that. But when I'm out here and it's just a nightmare of white bass and shad everywhere and everything under the sun, I'm a lot pickier about what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to grab this real quick, then we're going to see if we see anything, and if not, we're out. There's a bunch of birds up on the bank up here, but I'm not seeing any shad or anything kicking up in the grass, but there's like four or five birds down the stretch of grass, which is interesting. Um, I'm not seeing any activity or like fish busting or shad busting, so not super excited about that. Otherwise, I'm still have my, my hawk eyes out trying to see if there's a stretch that, of grass that could hold a bunch of fish. holding out hope, but stretch looks okay right there, but not worth it, not worth it. Okay, so there's a couple fish down here. A little bit less activity over here, which is kind of nice. There's a couple of fish, a lot of fish. Um, they're not set up exactly how I want them to be. And this might be a thing too, where like when I, I'm going through these areas, they may just not be set up right this time of day. Maybe it's too early for them to be set up properly or whatever, but let me stop this recording and start it again real quick, and then we'll run the next spot. Okay, we're back. Let's, uh, let's go on another spot. This is day in the life of graphing with Johnny. This is how it goes 90% of the time. <laughs>
for those of you who are observant, you may have noticed I skipped over some good ledges as I was running around the lake there. Uh, but I don't want to hit every single ledge right now. There is a bunch of stuff like all in through here. There's really good ledges like here and here and here. There's a bunch of stuff. But I'm just skipping that um, because for two reasons. One, I've never caught fish off those ledges in the past and I've graphed them like a million times. Um, so, or I have caught a few fish, but I haven't really caught them like really well. So I don't want to stop and the spots I'm pulling up on are spots where I've actually like caught schools of fish before. Um, that's not to say that there's not fish there and those may be the spots that have them. So uh, it's not really the best logic maybe in the world, but I'm also trying to find areas that uh, have a little bit shallower water they drop into deeper water. They aren't like a super steep drop. So this spot comes up from like 13 feet or drops from like 13 feet down into the abyss and like 80 feet, 60 feet. So I'm trying to focus on areas like that specifically. Uh, one thing you'll notice is I am graphing kind of higher up on these ledges because honestly, I find that a lot of the better schools of fish set up more up on top of the drop, kind of like you know, 10 to 30 yards up on top of the drop versus like on the actual lip of the ledge a lot of times. That's not always the case, but I can also see these fish on the side imaging. Like right now, we have a really nice image on side scan where we have some nice rock and I do see a handful of fish are suspended on the side scan out to the right side of the boat. So like right here, we actually can see this is the edge of the ledge. There's nothing up on top of it but we have a bunch of dots right there. We have some dots there. We have some dots there that look like fish. So we're actually going to mark that and we're going to regraph it here in a second. But I'm going to mark all these little potential fish things. And all these fish are kind of suspended actually off the drop, which is not necessarily what I was expecting to find them doing, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, that's why we graph, to know if they're actually doing what we think they are or if they're not. Um, just checking to make sure my camera's going because, you know, sometimes it just doesn't, doesn't work. So just checking it. Uh, okay. So let's graph over this. We'll see if there's anything here. We're just going to kind of zigzag this ledge, see if we can see anything crazy. Um, spot I marked is deeper than... 17 feet so if we are going to find any fish out here they are going to be suspended up in the water column and there are a couple of fish that are suspended up there i can see with the 2d but there's also just a mess of stuff on the down imaging the way i set my settings again guys if you haven't heard this a million times now i filter out a lot of the smaller fish and debris on my 2d sonar so that it's very a clear image or it's a clearer image and it does look like there's a couple of bass on that 2d sonar view i saw that I had that split screen up there were a few bass that were suspended up there uh, from the looks of it nothing crazy it's not like i saw 15 20 bass um, we do have a nice little wad of something there it's also a tree there's a couple of nice dots right there with some bait two or three nice dots uh -huh. There's several dots there that look more bass-ish. They're kind of clustered together and spread apart. That honestly looks really good. Um, I'm gonna do something that's interesting. I got this new view. I wanna see if this actually helps. Uh, this is a thing that Darren from Integrated Boatworks installed for me. It's basically, whoa, what do I, what am I gonna do here? How do I do this? Uh, it is a, live scope transducer that's mounted off the back of my boat and basically what i can do is i can graph with side imaging and with my live scope while i'm actually driving and i can actually see what i'm looking at in terms of like am i seeing a bunch of fish or a bunch of baits so this is kind of a cool little view um, i can't see where i'm going right now which is not great okay i'm online uh, I can at least see the live scope a little bit. It's a pretty cool deal. Um, you can see there's a bunch of gar and stuff up there, but there are some 
fish that are potentially stacked up. It's not the cleanest view in the world, to be fair. We are kind of going a little bit fast. Um, it's kind of interesting. I am seeing some fish. I'm not seeing any fish though that I feel like are like really stacked up super, super well. There's a nice brush pile right there. There are some fish around. I don't know. Um, we might come back and hit this because there's some nice rock down there and everything too. I'm not 100% sold on this. Maybe I just hit it at a bad angle that last pass because it did look like there were some fish down there. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's drop the live scope just to see. I want to show you guys what this looks like, just to drop it for a second, because um, it did look okay. Looked like there may be a couple fish, but we should be able to tell within like five seconds if there's a school of bass there set up properly or not. So let's just check it because it did look uh, looked okay. There might looks like there are bass there potentially. So um, it's not the most conclusive though I've ever seen. So let me stop this recording real quick and start the live scope stuff. Okay, there we go. So, first couple casts of the morning. Let's see if there's anything out here. I'm gonna start with a new little bait that I have concocted together. This is the, I'm gonna call it the Chatter Tush. It is a three quarter ounce seven aught tush hook from Core Tackle, and I put the switch blade. This is a attachable chatterbait blade and I'm putting it with this jackal bounty shad. It's this big bait. Uh, it's like a six and a half, seven inch bait on that three quarter ounce tush with that chatterbait blade on it. It looks freaking good in the water and it vibrates. It's kind of like a little bit of an alteration on the tush with the spunk shad I've been throwing a lot. And I want to see if maybe because there's a lot of just junk going on, as you can see on the live scope, it's just ridiculous. There's just there's so much stuff, there's too much stuff. Um, my live scope does not normally look this cluttered, to be honest. The reason it looks so cluttered is because there's actually a lot of clutter. Uh, and don't know what to make of that exactly. Can't tell what's what right here. Can't tell what's bass, if there's bass. There's a brush pile right there. Really hard to tell what's going on. There's gar surfacing on the water, so I know there's at least some gar, and you can see that on the live scope. You can see there's a lot of really big arches, so there's definitely gar. That fish that's like 70 feet out is a big gar. 60 feet out, it's a big gar. We'll see how they react to this thing at least. But there's there's some good dots down there, but I think that most of these are gar from the looks of it, unless they come up and actually try to eat my bait. See, like, none of those fish are reacting to my bait. My bait's 50 feet out. Pulsing that little deal through them. And that tush feels so, that chatter tush feels so good. I mean, there's a lot of good looking stuff down there. That looks, you know, like it could be a school of bass. I don't know. 40 feet out. But it's really hard to tell. It's set up on the bottom like those would be bass. Looks like we have some gar action. We also have some bass action. We got a little bit of everything going on around this spot. There's some shad that are coming and those fish are not really, really getting all over those shad. The shad are going to the bottom, which is very weird. But like, you'd expect that those shad would be running. If those were bass, they'd be wanting to run away from them those fish not go right to them so I am very dubious of whether these are actually what these are because there's just so much going on, on the screen it's just hard to tell this is kind of what I wanted to show you because it's like it's getting kind of crazy so I don't know I think there are a few bass mixed in with this because I just there have to be with that many dots down there 
I just don't know how to, to pick them out from the crowd other than just firing over and just kind of hoping. That's kind of not the best strategy, I would say, overall. Oh. One at least reacted to it. I love this chatter, this, this switchblade on this tush though. It's so good. I have not caught a fish on it, but I experimented with it at the house and it feels amazing. And it's kind of like, I mean, something, there's a lot of guys that fish these um, chatter baits out deeper, but this thing gets down there really fast. Oh, I like it a lot. There's some fish there that's on the bottom up there, but I see that all the time out here. And you would think that those are like fish, like bass that are set up tight to the bottom, but those are just whatever. I don't know, they're just swimming around. They're gar, they're just stuff. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Like I'm not, I'm not thinking that we're really around anything special. It looks great on the screen and you guys who have live scope might see this stuff and be like, man, I can't believe I'm not getting bit on all that. Look at all those fish down there. Well. When they're not bass and they're not set up properly, you're just wasting your time a lot of times. And I think that's kind of what's going on here, to be honest. I'm gonna make one more cast, because I just, I mean, looks like there's potential at least to have a bass down there. And after this cast, we're gonna keep graphing, because didn't feel great about this to begin with. And I think my suspicions were confirmed by dropping the live scope and making a few casts that this is not necessarily what we're looking for. There's just so much happening down there. It's crazy. You would think if there were white bass or something, they used at least get a one to hit this bait. Um, so they might just be all gar. This, this might have a gar infestation problem and there could be drum and Asian carp. There's all kinds of stuff that it could be. So, not getting too worried about it. Um, there are some fish that are just high up in the water column. I'm trying to see if there's any fish that are like just suspended up here high that look like they could be bass. Um, the only ones I see there up high it look like gar because they look massive and there's just stuff everywhere. So yeah, let's just... Uh, Let's forget we stopped here and put this out of our memory very fast. And keep rolling, because this was, this was not it. Okay, back on the grind. Let's go find another ledge. There's one just right, right over here, actually. And you may think it's weird that I'm just running these ledges, even though I'm not seeing that much, but you know, every once in a while you'll run like five, six, seven ledges and all of a sudden one of them will just have a group of bass that's set up properly. So I don't really get too bothered if I graph stuff and I'm not seeing it. Uh, they should be around this type of area. That's the thing is it's definitely one of those things. It's more of a, they should be on this stuff than um, I'm actually sure they are. Uh, so, that's kind of the scenario we find ourselves in. Once we hit this stuff though, I'm going to start, there's one more ledge deal I want to check out after this. Then I want to head back into a creek, because I have a sneaking suspicion that we may need to be fishing some like brush piles or something else today to get these fish to bite. And there's more likely to be like brim beds and things back in these creeks a little bit deeper. Um, so there's a major creek over here we're gonna run to the back of and check. It's not really that far or that deep, but it's we're gonna run to a creek and we're gonna check it out. Graphing top of this ledge though. Um, side scanning to see if I can see any fish up here. And uh, also trying to just see if I see any fish on 2D. But 
not looking fantastic. That's a nice brush pile right there on that drop on the side scan. And there's a couple of fish suspended around it on the side scan too. That looks pretty spicy right there. Where is my, let's see here. Well, some fish out to the left of the boat over here. But right here, it's a nice brush pile. And out in front or off the side of it, you see one, two, three, four dots that are nice dots out there on side scan. I like that a lot. There's also what looked like to be some fish out here to the, out over here, but I don't know what that is. Uh, those could be just gar or something crazy. So I'm not gonna get too worried about that. Uh, there's another little stick up right there, and there's a couple fish we can see on side scan. Again, could be gar, but there's definitely some fish right here, and there's a little piece of brush. We may, before we head back in these creeks, we may take a second to just fire a jig on some of these brushier spots. Uh, like hit these two brush piles real quick just to see if we can fish a piece of harder cover and actually get a bite so let's try that really fast i'm gonna zoom in here we're kind of a good distance away from these so let's make a cast here i just want to check this theory uh see if these fish are in these brush piles uh there's a little there's like one little lay down and one um brush pile just test the hypothesis for a second don't make more than like four or five casts Okay, let's get up here. I got a football jig going. And we're gonna fire a couple of casts with the jig up there just to see on this brush. Let's see if we can get anything. I'm gonna hope I can even see it. See the see the little lay down or whatever with all this junk going on up there. really can't see it. So much going on. Wow. It's just too much crap. I'm gonna go to this next one. That little lay down has too much going around on it. I'm gonna go over to this other uh, brush pile. While I do that, actually, I'm gonna pick up a deep diving crankbait and just crank the top of this ledge while I'm working my way over to this, just to see if maybe I can pick up a random. Sometimes that works. Who knows, maybe I just need to get on these ledges and just crank, that could be a deal sometimes just getting on these ledges and cranking or throwing a flutter spoon sometimes just gets bit but it's not super typical to be honest so I'm not holding out any hope I just want to be doing something while I'm moving brush piles coming up here in just a second anyways just burn this crankbait Check the top of this ledge out for a second. Throw a jig in this and then we're gonna roll. Uh, we may need to fish some rock today. We may need to go drag around a shaky head on some shell or something. I got one shell bed I know about out here. Maybe we can drag a shaky head on some shell. There's still a lot of options. Um, I just I wanna make sure I'm not missing the ledge deal because if we find a ledge that's loaded up, that's when you can get really right in a hurry. So that's my first instinct out here, but after that, barring that not working, backs up a little bit, I'm close to this thing. Where's that pile? Is that it right there? I can't even tell because there's so much going on on these spots. You know, I'm not that close to it. I guess that's it. It's a very weak looking pile, but we will throw a bait over there. Drag that jig. There's so many fish just busting on the surface around here that are not bass. It's crazy. 
Look at all this stuff going on out here. Just random schoolers. All that bait is up super high in the water column. I'm in that brush right now. The brush is over there. So much activity going on. It's just all random. I'm just gonna work my jig super slow through this stuff. Just to see. It feels really good for what it's worth. More of that pile. See my jig probably on live scope when it hits the water. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna make two casts on this and then don't get bit on these two casts we're leaving. because uh, I don't wanna waste time on a bunch of stuff that's maybe not any good. I kind of wanted to get up here too with the live scope just to see if I see anything that's like crazy. Like if there's some fish that are busting on the, like coming up to the surface hot or something like that. But there's a fish right there. There's a couple of fish that are out there at the, that's gotta be gar, 50 foot. There's just big, big dots. I'm gonna crank this one cast just to burn a crankbait over the top of that just to see if there's a that'll get a reaction strike and then after that we'll we'll go. I'm gonna check some different stuff after this. Uh, there's a ledge I know like I mentioned that had like that shell bed I found a while ago. We might check that and then probably run to the back of a pocket maybe grab some brush. You guys want the crankbait? Come on. It felt so good when I hit that brush pile. I was like, gotta be a bite. And uh, no, it doesn't gotta be a bite. It was not a bite at all. One more cast because it felt too good. Like if there was bass down there, I feel like I would have just got absolutely blasted on that cast. Nothing. Let's roll. This is a trial and error process. You guys see, it takes me a while to find these fish when I'm in these uncuts. It takes me a while to find fish in general, because you just, I mean, I'm not, I haven't been to this lake since April, and the last time I fished here, I fished six inches of water in a water willow, so I haven't been out here for a while, so I have no idea what's happening. Okay, we're good here. We're gonna check one more ledge. Uh, and then we're going to check a point, and then we're going to head back in the back of these, this creek. So that's kind of my plan. See if it works. So I got a couple waypoints up here. I have just some rocky spots, maybe, I think some of them are shell. They marked like an April. 
It was one of the first few waypoints I actually had on this graph. So I got this graph just earlier this year. So this is uh, from pretty recently, but I don't know if there's any fish on this stuff. So that's the thing, guys. When I go out and do these videos for you, these uh, like uncut style content, I'm not coming out here and fishing these spots beforehand, finding all these fish and like getting dialed in. I'm literally coming out here uncut and just like raw. And that's something that you don't see in YouTube videos. You see guys go and show the final result of when they fished for like the first six hours a day or five hours a day they've spent trying to figure stuff out and they cut out all the beginning part or they trim that part down of them not catching fish into like three minutes so it feels like, oh, it's super fast. They, you know, it just took a little bit of time for them to figure it out. When in reality, this is what happens for like most anglers. And there's a lot of times when guys make YouTube videos, they might go out and practice and fish the same lake two, three, four times in a week to finally find those fish. Where going out just day of on a lake that you haven't been to in a long time and just going and fishing, it's not that simple. It's not like you're just gonna come out here and just start hammering them and finding them in the first five minutes. That just isn't realistic. That's not the reality of bass fishing. And I'm hoping to show you guys that because honestly, I think a lot of anglers get discouraged with offshore bass fishing because they think that it's this super fast, easy process when it is by no means that. It is challenging, it is hard work, it's time behind the graph, and you have to check a lot of stuff. There's a lot of variables out here you have to figure out. Are these fish out here on the main lake ledges? Are they actually on ledges at all? Are they back in the creeks on brim beds and on things like that? Are they? Um, doing something completely different other than that. I mean, there's there's so many options. There's some nice fish right there, and it doesn't look as crazy on the graph. It actually looks pretty decent. There's several nice dots right there. Oh, there's some dots right there too. There's bait, they don't look that big, but there definitely is something going on right in here. I like that. Let's mark fish. I'm re-graphing this because I thought I saw something on side scan earlier too while I was talking. I should have mentioned it. Uh, Mark fish. Okay, let's uh, keep graphing. The one thing I like about the spot, so right away, right off the bat, I'll tell you why I like this. There's not as much junk happening on the screen. We're getting further down towards the dam and it seems like there's less, I mean, there's still a lot of random crap going on. Don't get me wrong, but it's a little bit less than what we were seeing before, which is a really positive sign because it seems like we might be able to actually be able to differentiate bass from other stuff in this area. I'm gonna re-graph this again. I don't wanna graph it too many times, but what could happen is those fish could be just roamers, and if I re-graph it again, they could be completely gone. That's very common this time of year. So I don't wanna stop and fish for this if these fish, when I graph again, are gone or in a different spot, because that means that we're not dealing with a school that's set up anywhere, we're dealing with random roamers, which it's not ideal, but uh, looks like there's some fish down there. Yeah, there's some nice dots and arches and stuff down there. So that looks like it could be a spot. There's some bait stacked up. There's definitely a few fish on the 2D and on the down imaging. So yeah, that looks like a spot right there that actually could hold some fish. Um, I, I don't mean to sound so shocked, but it's just been kind of a grind to find anything. We're gonna keep graphing on this ledge though. We just graphed over that like four or five times. So we're just gonna let that sit for just a second. And I'm gonna keep graphing. I'm gonna graph up here a little bit shallower. I wanna side scan this, this little rocky spot, see if we see any fish. Because sometimes these fish can get way shallower than you would think, especially on these cloudy days. We've been graphing out here deeper in that 15 foot zone, 17 foot. But those last fish we found were up here shallower in 10 foot. So there is a chance that we are fishing or we're just looking a little bit too deep. There's also some nice fish now there on the side scan, on the shadow of that drop. That looks pretty nice. I'm also scanning up here on this little rocky spot, see if I see anything. But I really, really like what's happening on the side scan right now. Oh my gosh, there's some nice fish there set up. You can't see it because of the uh, camera. Let me set it up here. Wow. So there's a bunch of dots right on the edge of that drop off. You can see in the shadow of that ledge, I'm graphing up, up, up the top of the ledge, it drops off hard from five foot down into like the abyss. But there are a pile of dots right in through here on this hard break. 
Now I'm going to mark this actually, um, just kind of down this little break, just to make sure I have this marked, and we'll look at it on the chart here. That looks like a spot where I could potentially go down and crank down that drop with all those fish off the edge, and I can crank off the edge and then kill my crankbait and they might come up and eat it. That seems like a deal on that. That, that looks really good to set up for that because when those fish are right on the edge of that drop from shallower, deeper water, you can grind a deep diver, pop it off the edge, and they'll come eat it. So that might be a deal real quick. We're gonna try that. And there is also that spot further up here that we can kind of make our way to. And I can also maybe throw a worm and drag it on that little rocky spot up there to see if there are some fish hiding way up there. So that gives us a bunch of options to check out. Looks pretty solid to me. So let me switch to the live scope view and we're gonna get rolling. Okay guys, that was very unfortunate. Uh, I just looked at my recording here and apparently my live scope was not recording and I just caught three fish. So I am just gonna play those fish catches for you really fast, but you won't see the live scope. And then I'll cut those in and then I'll show you what I'm seeing on the live scope because I caught three nice fish right off the spot we just graphed. And for whatever reason, uh, didn't record, but we'll catch more. So uh, I'll show those three fish catches, even though it'll just be the fish catch and then I'll get the live scope action going for you. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit more optimistic. This spot is not necessarily a hidden spot. This is probably one of the bigger community holes on this lake. So not saying I'm finding anything special, but what I am saying is that it looks like there's actually some fish that could be caught here. <laughs> so nothing I'm graphing today is like a secret area or anything like that. I'm not finding anything that's like super fancy, but you don't always need to find fancy. A lot of times you just need to find fish that will actually bite and are aggressive and, and stuff that works. And I, I prefer to graph spots and find stuff that's working in the moment, even if it's running a bunch of community holes, rather than trying to find the needle in the haystack, because that can take forever to do, one. Two, when you do find that needle in the haystack a lot of times, those fish are only there for that moment. And it's just not always worth the effort to go find that. So I'm gonna bomb this crankbait up there. You see those fish there sitting on the edge of that drop. On the live scope, those could be bass. And what I'm gonna try to do is just burn my crankbait down there, hit the edge of that drop, and right when it hits the edge, I'm gonna, oh, burn it and kill it. I thought one hit it there. Maybe it did. I thought I got slammed on that. There's some fish up there. There's fish there out here in the open. I might be able to actually target those fish too with like a flutter spoon or something. But look at those fish right there. That is a school of bass if I've ever seen one. Pretty sure those are bass. Might need to throw something other than the crankbait though. The crankbait might be going underneath them. Pretty sure these are bass. They just look like bass, but let me. I'm gonna throw the, uh, the tush on them with the spunk shad. Cause those look too good, I don't know. Maybe those aren't bass, I don't know. They look good though. Oh, they're schooling right there. Oh gosh, get in here. They're definitely up there. Come on, fish. Got him. There we go. Knew it. Not a big one, but it's a fish. He's a definitely bass right here. Little guy on the core tackle, 3 8 ounce tush. It's a little white guy. I'm just getting him back down there. Um, 3 8 ounce tush with a hog farmer spunk shad. This bait is so versatile. It catches the schoolers, catches them when they're down deeper. I'm going to. Man, they're up there. I've been doing so off this so much recently, guys. I'm basically targeting these suspended fish and making them come up for my bait. It's the hover strolling technique. It's the whatever you want to call it. And not, not that many guys over here in Oklahoma are doing it. And it freaking works. And what I'm trying to do is draw those fish out of the deeper water to come up to eat my bait. That's the goal with this technique. 
It works really well with this live scope. Those bass are just chilling down this whole deal. It almost works better when I'm not seeing him come up and eat it, which is kind of weird too. When I actually watch them like on the live scope eat my bait, it doesn't work nearly as well as when I'm just kind of doing my own normal retrieve. I still think I can crank these fish though. I don't think this is the only thing I can do to catch them. Those fish right there look really good. It's positioned perfectly. My bait. Oh, they're schooling. Go get over there, tush. Come on. Come on. Got him. Nice one. Not a bad one. On the tush, swiped at it. Found him, guys. There we go, beautiful fish. Not a big one, but just a nice one. I don't want to waste too much time because freaking found him finally. Man, that tush with the spunk shad has just been... Like my one-two punch on all these lakes, guys, has basically been the tush with the spunk shad on the dirtier water lakes. And on the clear water lakes, I've been throwing the uh, hover rig and like that... Oh, golly, that one-two combo. It's like on the dirtier water lakes, they like that little bit bigger profile and a little bit faster fall of the tush, that three eight ounce tush with the spunk shad. And then for whatever reason, on the lakes with the uh, clear water, they really like the lighter hover rig and they'll come for a greater distance to come eat it. Let's see if I can get these fish to actually react though when they're not schooling. You can see them all out here. They're, they're cruising out here. Some good ones out here too. They're just kind of like up like the, oh man, that looks so good right there. Look at that bait ball down there. Uh oh, come on fish, come eat my bait. Oh, come on. They're all over the bait. What? What's going on right there? My bait's falling through that bait ball right into those fish. Come on. Those bait fish are pretty small to be fair. So maybe I need to go to a smaller profile. I might need to actually hover rig these fish, which is kind of weird. They're really keyed in on that shad. Let me see if I can throw the hover rig over there. Maybe that will actually get these fish to bite. I got a really tiny bait on here. But it's real dirty, so I don't know. I'm about to find out. It's the same bait I was throwing on beaver in that uncut, this little Bastrix, tiny little minnow. I might go back to a crankbait here in a second, too. This little shad is tiny. I can barely see it on the live scope. Some decent ones down there too. Like there's some good ones. Man, there's fish are just busting out here randomly in the middle too. They're just out here. There's a bunch of fish on this spot. I don't think we need to go anywhere, to be honest. I think we found a spot. Now it's a matter of what is the best bait to get him to bite. I'm thinking I need to go chunk a flutter spoon down at him to get him kind of rolling. I'm gonna keep this tush out over here. I'm going to pick up the big magnum flutter spoon because even though the shad are 
not very big that these smaller fish are feeding on. Maybe these bigger fish are feeding on the gizzards in particular. So I'm thinking that maybe this mag flutter spoon might get the job done just a little bit better. It's a six inch Ben Parker Magnum flutter spoon, the mini Magnum actually. So much bait down there. Seems like one of these fish just crushed the spoon. They're all on it right now. Come on. They're all over it. Oh, look at all those fish on, underneath those shad, directly in front of the boat. They're all schooled up. Come on. They don't look very big, but there's a bunch of them. Get my spoon down there. Swimming so fast. Wow. Need to back off maybe a little bit. I might be getting a little bit too close to these fish potentially. I don't know. I'm right on those fish right there. They're feeding on smaller shad though, and we, oh my goodness. Okay, come on, come on. One of you has to hit that spoon. Look at them all. Oh, one smacked it. They're all small. They, they, they're going on smaller bait. Okay. Wow, look at those fish, they're up there though, chasing. You can see them up on top of that deal. Okay, we need to hover rig these fish or something because they're on smaller bait. They wouldn't eat the crank bait. They kind of ate the tush, but I still think that might be a little bit too much bait for them. We'll go to the hover rig. Wow, look at them up there. Oh my God. How can I not get one of these to eat? Come on, eat fish. Eat. Oh my goodness, they're just going crazy up there. High up in the water. Need to wait for them to get back up high. My bait is at 80 feet. It's not clear enough, I feel like, get these fish to actually come up to eat my Hover rig, because it's so, it's so dirty. The water here is not super clear. So they're not gonna come from a long distance. So it's almost like you have to hit them on the head or I need to throw the, the tush on them and just call them up with that. Or, oh, the chatter tush. I completely forgot I had this thing on, the chatter bait tush. This is big bait, so I don't know if this is going to work either. This is a really big bait. Um, oh, they're schooling right here. Come on. Chatter tush, is this going to work? Will I actually eat it? Nope. The bait's not big enough. They're not feeding on like the big gizzards or anything. They're feeding on smaller bait. So this bigger... This bigger swim bait is not the ticket on this exact spot. There are big gizzards in this lake though. I don't know where they are. If we can find, if we find a little patch of them with big gizzards, sorry, crank bait behind me. If we find a patch with big gizzards out here, we might be able to load the boat really fast though. That's the thing. These fish though are not, like I'm cranking here and these fish are not feeding down. They're feeding up 100%. You see all these fish on the live scope, they're all up high in the water column. So by cranking, I'm putting my bait basically underneath these fish. So that's why the crankbait probably is not as effective. Like when I first pulled up here, it didn't really 
do much for these fish. But there is that group that's further up here that was down there in that like 12 foot range, which might actually be more susceptible to the crankbait. But it may be one of those things where the only thing I can get them to bite is that spunk shad tush combo, which unfortunately has kind of been the case for me all summer. I mean, I guess not unfortunately, because I'm catching them, but I like fishing other stuff. Like you can see, I throw a lot of different baits. And for whatever reason, just the hover rig this summer, I don't know if because these fish are just so pressured. The hover rig and the, the tush with, with the kind of the hover strolling style, this is what I caught those couple fish on, is that um, hog farmer spunk shad five and a half inch with that three eight ounce four out tush. That's been my go-to. And it's just been working all over the place. Like everywhere I go, it's working. And I think it's just because these fish haven't seen it. And also it just targets these fish that are up here suspended more. And I think more fish are suspending than ever before. Oh, keep one's about to crush it. Come on, come and eat it. One came up hot on that thing. He didn't eat it though. Going, oh, way behind me. Can I make it there? Not really. <laughs> Loosen up my reel or something. I couldn't hit that, that cast that far. These fish, though, probably later in the day will set up tighter. But you saw me find all these fish with that side imaging. That side imaging is super helpful at times for finding these fish just off these drops and around. Um, I do want to see where we're at because there was a rocky spot way up there. And I want to see if maybe there's some fish that are actually using that rocky spot that's like way up on this drop because if they're off this edge, I don't see why they wouldn't also spend a little bit of time why some of those fish wouldn't push up way up on top. I haven't seen any busts though, but I want to test that hypothesis for a second. Oh, I just, as I say that, one bust way up there on that rocky deal. Come on now. I'm just screw with my reel. Can't cast it as far as I want to. I'm like loosening it up as, as loose as it'll go. It's right on that rocky spot. Yeah, you're right on that rocky spot and one busted up there. You can see him up there even. Pretty hard to see, but you can kind of see some stuff going on up there. I set my downrange, you can actually see that there's some fish that are using this little rocky spot up here. But most of the activity I'm seeing is behind me where they're busting, and they bust right out of range every single time, you know? This must be a morning thing. Wow, look at all those fish right there. School, if I've ever seen him. One of you has to want to eat. Got him. There we go. Nice one. Out of that school there. These dudes going crazy. Choked the hover. Tush. Nice one. Good fish. Not bigs, but we're catching them. That's all that matters. We'll get a good one here in a second, I feel like. Only a matter of time. Okay, there we go, guys. So we're back. 
Okay, there we go, guys. We're back. Live scope is repowered up. Uh, <laughs> we're going to make another pass down the stretch. That is very unfortunate. Uh, basically, what's happening, guys, is there are fish that are just all up and down this drop. And uh, I had to change reels. My reel is kind of acting up on me a little bit. But basically, they're on this drop, just like we saw them on the side imaging. But for whatever reason, they... We are coming up for my bait real quick too. Eat a fish, come on. They are only really biting when you can see them specifically on the shad. I crank this whole stretch with a crankbait. I also threw a flutter spoon down it for a little bit. And I can only get these fish to bite when they actually come up like physically, either physically schooling or I see them on the grass schooled up underneath the water. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just going down this stretch and either waiting for them to school or again with the live scope scanning to see when they actually are aggressively feeding on stuff. So like there's one kind of right there. Not really, but you want to see like four or five that are up. But I'm kind of just working this hog farmer spunk shad on the three eighths ounce tush. And I'm working it over the top of these fish, getting them to come up and eat it. That's the only way I can get these fish to actually bite or do anything. It's very weird. And it's been like that kind of all summer for me, to be honest. I've really struggled to catch fish on the bottom this year, even when it gets sunny. These conditions right now are a lot more conducive to these schoolers than they are for a, uh, for like a crankbait or anything, because these fish are so high up in the water and they're just cruising. But for whatever reason, these, uh, these fish just like to be suspended this, this year. And I'm catching a lot of fish again, as I may have mentioned in the clips, or maybe I didn't, catching them on the hover rig really well in the clear water when I have like four plus feet of visibility. But when you get less than four feet of visibility, this hover rig or the tush with the spunk shad combo, three eighths ounce tush, 5.5 inch hog farmer spunk shad, when you have like two to four foot of visibility, this bait gets a bit way better. And all I'm doing is kind of taking advantage of this schooling activity in the morning with the live scope and trying to get one of these fish to actually come up and commit to my bait. It's not the easiest thing in the world, to be honest, to get these fish to commit right now. And that is, oh, come on. Mainly a factor of the fact they're feeding on a really small shad but the small baits I'm throwing, like the little tiny hover rig baits, they're hard for these fish to see in this dirtier water. So you're kind of forced to throw a little bit bigger bait. And I would honestly like to crank these fish or throw like a flutter spoon or something as well. I just, I threw it, I can't get bit on it. So I'm kind of stuck with this hover or this tush right now. But we're gonna look around and keep seeing, I, it's a bummer you guys didn't get to see the live scope on those three fish catches because it was pretty cool. Um, it wasn't like anything super fancy, but those fish definitely were aggressive and up and feeding. You could see them on the live scope. I'm sure we'll find another scenario like that here in a second. You, got, you can see them kind of right there in front, 70 feet out. You can see that there's a few fish on that bait, but they're not really doing exactly what they were doing earlier, though that looks pretty good. So we're gonna fire on a handful of these fish, see if we can get one to actually commit. We got ourselves a spot at least that has some bass, which is, is our main objective. And then I'm also gonna try to throw a few other baits because there are fish down this drop, even though I didn't um, get bit, I haven't gotten bit on like a crankbait or anything. I think I can also come through this area and drag a jig and do a few other things to kind of maximize this area. And now that I've found an area that has so many fish in it, I think what I need to do is instead of trying to run around and find more fish, I think one, I can just kind of take advantage of these fish when they sporadically start schooling, but I can also maybe go through these areas and drag a jig and fish a little bit slower, throw a worm, stuff like that and pick up an extra bite. And I also wanna figure out how to get the bigger fish in this area to bite. The three fish I caught were not big by any means. And I think there are some better quality fish to be had here. So it's just a matter of, ooh, look at all those fish. Bait selection 
and a few other things to see if we can actually get these fish to to go. Look at all those fish. That's what I was talking about earlier when those fish were up on the bait. You have a small window of opportunity to actually get your bait down there to them, unfortunately. I'm kind of screwing up my casts on this. My bait right there. Kind of screwed that one up. Got a few fish off a little bit further up on that point that they're kind of going right there. Get one to actually come up and play. My best fish came when they weren't actually schooling. They were just underneath the water like this. So I think there's something to that where I need to find a way to actually catch these fish fishing versus just catching them when they're schooled up on the surface. And the fish they were at when I were they were actually busting that I caught on the surface, they were smaller fish. So I'm gonna put this uh, push right here and I'm going to try to drag a jig I think for a minute and then I'll pick up that tush if they start busting. That's my thought at least at the moment because there's definitely a wad of fish down this little stretch right here and if I can drag one up or find a little deal a bait or something that can get a better quality bite, we're going to be in business. There's another spot that's similar to this that's just down the way that we may also go check. It's kind of a uh, steep, rocky drop off just like this. We may let this rest for a minute, come back, because um, I did catch three fish here. Not that I think that I caught all the fish by even a small stretch of the imagination, uh, but they have kind of stopped busting here for a second. And I don't know if that's because of boat pressure or it's just coincidence that my live scope was out. And as soon as I turn the live scope back on, they stop biting. That could be it right there. Um, but anyways. Got him. Oh, there we go on the football jig. Better one. Oh my gosh, there we go, guys. Had to stop fishing for the schoolers. Came back with the football jig. There we go, got a good one. That's what I'm talking about. Fish the moment, make adjustments. Whew, just fired out at that spot, dragging it. That fish has mud on his bottom of his tail. For whatever reason, those smaller fish were up there higher in the water column. And I could catch him on the hover rig or the tush and you know that spunk shot a little bit, but had to go to the jig, drag it down there to actually get one of these better quality fish to bite. That's a solid two and three quarter pounder. Let's get this guy back down there. And make sure we're actually recording still. Yeah, we're good. There we go, guys. So just pause that and start it over again. Got that fish on the fish to moment offshore jig, just a 5 8 ounce football jig with a big bite baits kamikaze craw off the back. And you can see those fish up there on the live scope down that drop. It's those fish. You can literally see them right there on the graph. And I was just dragging that jig super slow down there in that like. 14 to 18 foot zone. Kind of got my boat positioned here, pointed into the, into the wind, and I'm just kind of fan casting that area. Graphed all these fish beforehand, and that fish chomped it. So, really good sign right there, and it shows me that I need to be catching these fish just fishing. I did catch my one fish that I did have that was like a little bit better quality on that. Um, the spunk shag was when that bait was down there kind of deeper in the water column and closer to the fish, but they weren't really absolutely crushing it. And a lot of times you can come in on these areas where the fish are schooling and drag a jig really slow. And those better quality fish are just kind of waiting down there for an easy meal. And I might be able to kind of combo it with some other baits here too. Uh, I'm not saying this is the only thing I can catch them on is this jig now. There's a lot of baits, but you got to keep an open mind, you know, on those fish that were busting, the bait that was working was the first one I showed you there, that tush, but doesn't mean that's the only way to catch fish off these spots. You gotta really experiment with bait choice, especially because when it's this hard to find the fish. Like I spent an hour and a half graphing to find a spot and then I started getting bit. And as soon as you find a spot, especially when it's kind of tough to 
differentiate the bass from the other stuff and you know you're around the bass, you need to then pick that area apart and figure out the right way to maximize the area. There may be an even better way to catch some of these better fish, maybe with a flutter spoon, maybe with a, um, I don't know, I have no idea. I'll, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. Maybe Carolina rig, there's a bunch of baits I can throw on this spot. But for now, I'm gonna drag this jig for a few minutes, see if I can get another good quality fish like that and work down this drop a little bit. And then if they do come up schooling, I do have that option to fire at them. So it, it's a good one-two punch, basically drag while there's nothing happening on the surface. And then when you do find something, fire over there, the more active shad imitator. Good stuff, guys, this is good. I Not catching big, big ones yet, but a lot of times too, it's a timing deal on this stuff. Look at all those fish there over there, golly. What's the side of the boat? Where is that? I need to fire over there. It's kind of on the end of that drop over there. Okay, fire over there. We're gonna keep dragging. Um, it's cloudy, you would think a jig is not the call, but you got to keep an open mind in this situation and got to try to maximize these areas the best you can. I do think now though that I found this spot, I think there's some more fish are going to be on another spot I know about just around the, just over a little ways over. So I think what I can do is fish this spot for maybe 20 more minutes, let's say 15, 20 more minutes, and then hopefully catch a few more decent fish, then let it rest to go check this other spot that I have pretty decent amount of confidence in. We'll have some fish just based on everything I've seen right now. Oh golly, there was one. I was looking at the schoolers. And that dude had it. I'm gonna pull the illegal move of firing my bait while another bait is out because that schoolers are there. Oh golly. Got him. There we go. Can't do this in a tournament guys, but you can do it when you're fun fishing. Freaking fish school, and I had a fish bite my jig over there. Got this guy on the Spunk Chad Tush combo. Not even using the live scope really right now, just firing around. But there we go. Nice fish, solid two pounder Spunk Shad Tush. Let me fire back over there just to see if there's still a fish or two. Um, they were schooled up. Busting over there. Still a couple fish in the area. Working that bait pretty hard, pretty fast. Looks like there's still a few fish over there. see those fish that are just kind of out here over nothing, schooled up. There they are right there. There's a good one underneath there too. There's like one or two really good quality fish mixed in with this stuff. See my bait, it's right there, 50 feet out. These fish are not reacting to it though unless they're actually up there schooled up. It's really weird. You can drop it right on their face, and they don't seem to care. But when they're busting on the surface, they will choke it. Far back over here, though, because I did have that bite. Where was that? I don't know if that was a fish or not, to be honest. I think it was, though. Okay, so pick, oh my gosh, as soon as I cast my jig, there they go over there. Glad I fixed my reel, my reel earlier, I wasn't able to cast very far. But this one, I can't, oh, come on. He hammered that thing, didn't get it. Oh, he ripped my, bait down look at that he pulled my pants down on my my tush 
Didn't get it though. Keep dragging. Probably could just sit here all day and just wait for fish to come up busting. I think you'd catch a good one doing this, to be honest. Oh my God, there they are. Come on, fish. Come on. One smacked it again. Pull my pants down again, dang it. Need to get a new bait on here quickly. Every once in a while, one of these is busting. I just need to lay the football jig down. Or maybe that's the reason that they're biting it is because I do have the football jig. My hand, as soon as I pick that up, they'll keep busting. Usually how that works. This is the, the bait I'm putting on here is this purple haze missile bait spung shad on that core tackle, three eight ounce tush. This thing is so deadly right now, guys. It's my go-to bait. Like I can catch them fishing it like a, there's some fish right behind the boat, like underneath the back end of my boat, what the heck? I had a long cast with that football jig. I don't think I need to cast that far. It's interesting, I couldn't get bit on the crankbait, but I got bit on the jig. That's also kind of curious to me. But fish are weird like that. I think you could go around guys and just throw a jig all day, every day, and catch quality fish in these Oklahoma lakes. Like, man, look at those fish. They're right on that drop. 50 feet out. That I mean, that's just them straight up stacked. Okay, I have to be able to catch a fish on a deep diving crankbait when they're set up like that. Come on now. Are they gonna stay set up like that? Because if they stay set up like that, how do you not catch one on a deep diving crankbait on those fish? That's like the perfect setup for a deep diver. I don't know if these fish are just like, like they're not biting stuff like a deep diving crankbait because they're getting so conditioned because everyone fishes it out here and you kind of have to throw something different or if it's, I don't know. I really don't know what it is because Back in the day, I mean, if you see fish like that on 2D sonar and down imaging stacked like that on a drop, I mean, you're having a field day with a deep diving crankbait. And I've barely been able to catch a fish on a deep diving crankbait all year. I don't know what the deal is with that. Got a little bit of catfish slime on there, so that might be part of my problem with those fish. <laughs> I don't think they're all catfish though, to be honest. I think there's some bass mixed in. Man, this drop just looks so good. And there's fish just randomly that come up busting. I think some of these are catfish and other species. I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking these are all bass, but there's definitely enough bass for sure to have a good day, right? Just chilling right here. It's interesting because most of the schooling activity was happening in front of the boat here earlier, and then it kind of switched and it happened behind the boat over here and it's almost like but there's I mean it's not like there's not fish here either so it's kind of weird there's fish on this stuff too so I don't know what to make of that to be honest
Ooh, look at that right there, guys. Right. Fish are swimming kind of fast. I was saying, like, boom, right there is good, but it's like they're moving and grooving. I'm going to pause this real quick, guys, and restart it just to make sure I don't lose this recording. Okay, we're good. Still got that cast out there I just made. Haven't, haven't busted in a bit. Look at all those shad underneath the water. Oh my goodness. My bait's down there, 250 feet, like all in that mess. It's crazy. We're gonna fish down this just for a minute more and then like maybe three, four more minutes, just get to the end of these little fish icons I marked. And then I want to go try to find another spot just because it's fun finding new fish versus like, oh, some people like just sitting on one spot and just hammering them out. And I prefer to find new stuff. So like once I catch fish off a spot, I want to find something potentially better. And I can always come back here and fish if we want to. It's not that big of a deal, but there's a bunch of fish up on the surface up here. There's a lot of fish just down there on the bottom chilling. And it's weird because I caught that one fish on the jig dragging. I got one more bite and I haven't gotten another bite on the spot. So it's not like the jig, I guess, is a cure-all solution. And I've had more bites on the, the spunk shad tush combo than I have fishing the actual bottom. But I feel like you need that one-two combo to maximize a spot like this. That rock down there feels so good. I can't believe I didn't have the live scope going. That was a rookie move for that first little flurry. Rookie move. Oh, about to came up right there. Just watched him on live scope come up and try to eat that thing. That was cool. Fish streaked up. I'm gonna try to fish this spunk shed down there just a little bit. Cause there's a lot of fish that are just positioned pretty good for this deal. I'll try to get one to actually come up and try to eat it. Oh, one's following it right now. I'm trying to get them to come up for it. It's clear enough water for them to actually Want to come up for it. I think the profile just might be a little bit too big for them to eat, just as is. But the water's just a little bit too dirty. We're in that like weird water visibility thing where it's like just dirty enough where you have to throw a bigger bait, but it's the bait fish are just small enough that you want to throw a smaller bait. <laughs> Kind of annoying, to be honest. Let's see here. Can we find another some shad? Find another school of fish that's going crazy. I'm gonna keep rolling here just for a minute longer because we got a couple more little deals that look pretty good. And then we have that drop, that little area where we found that, that nice school earlier. 
I haven't even like gone over there yet. Or it didn't look like a school, but this looked like look. I mean, honestly, it looks like what we see on the screen here too. But there's just fish. There's just a bunch of fish, and I have my bait going right through them, and they're not reacting. So I don't know what species they are, to be honest. There's a good one out there. I, just, I think those are gar. But like, these are either gar or they're like five pounders. They're just out here, and it's really hard to tell. Or like seven pounders. Swam away from my bait, which is a great sign that they want it. I kind of got curious about it. Where's that shad kicking? I hear him. There they are. It's weird because like the faster I've been working this thing, the more bites I'm getting on it, on the tush. Like the slower I work it, the less interested these fish are. So I almost need to work it like super fast, and they need to be high enough in the water where they actually will come up and try to eat it. Okay. So, feeling pretty good about this spot. Found some fish, but let's keep rolling. I want to try to find something else because we have time. So we might as well keep trying to find something new. Let's go continue our search, see if we can find something even better than this. And I'm actually going to end this video here, guys. I fished for a few more hours and did catch some other fish, but it wasn't anything that interesting or different from what I've already shown in this video. So I'm going to cut it short and hopefully go to a new lake with completely different conditions in my next uncut video that will appear next week on Fish the Moment. Right now I'm thinking about going to the Arkansas River actually and show you how I graph shallow, dirty river systems and find bass on sandbar drops. It's a pretty unique technique and I think you might enjoy. Definitely leave a comment down below if there's a certain type of lake or fishing style that you want me to explore in one of these uncut Fish to Moment videos. And also leave a comment down below letting me know if you enjoyed this video and made it all the way to the end. Thanks again for checking this one out. We'll see you all next one.